Hello everybody, I'm Jeff Phillips and welcome to this week's webisode. Every week I bring in a new business to help share tips and ideas about their business or industry. And today I have Jennifer Dahlman and Jennifer, welcome to the show. Thank you, yeah. good to be here. Sure. Why don't you explain to everybody a little bit about yourself and what you do? Sure, uh, so my name is Jennifer Dahlman. I am an estate planning attorney at the law firm Walker Lamb, which is based here in Durham. Um, and estate planning really is helping our clients plan for incapacity or for death. Okay, all right. So. Talking about estate planning, um, how much money do you really need to have to be cons um, concerned about estate planning? Sure, so that's actually one of the most common misconceptions that people have. They think that estate planning is synonymous with tax planning. And while certainly tax planning is an element of estate planning for some of our clients, estate planning is much broader than that. So it really, it doesn't matter how much or how little you have, you want to make sure that it goes to the people that you want to inherit from you in the manner that you want them to inherit from you. Um, so part of estate planning is also asset protection for many clients. Um, it can be probate avoidance. Uh, it can be dealing with unique family situations, so blended families or children with special needs or perhaps heirs that might not be the most responsible decision makers and so they should not inherit outright because you're concerned that they're going to blow their inheritance. Um, maybe it's concern about your children getting a divorce and protecting them against that possibility. So really it's, it's about figuring out what the client's needs are and then drafting the plan to accommodate their specific needs or those specific goals that they have for their estate planning. Okay, so in addition to legal documents, what else does someone need to be concerned with um, when it comes to uh, talk, um, an estate plan? Sure. Uh, so one of the most common mistakes that people make is they think that their legal documents are going to control everything that they own, which is simply not true. Um, so estate planning is also looking at how your assets are owned and how beneficiary designations are set up to make sure that those are in sync with the legal documents. So, for instance, I have a 14-year-old son, and the primary asset that I'm going to leave to him if I pass away early is a life insurance policy. Um, and I've got a trust set up for him and it says when he's going to inherit from me and who's going to manage the money until he reaches a certain age and what the money can be used for. Uh, but if the beneficiary designation of my life insurance policy is just my son Alex and not this trust that I've set up for Alex, then the trust isn't going to control that money. And so it's making sure that those beneficiary designations for life insurance and for retirement plans especially are in sync with the legal documents. Um, another common mistake that we see people making is they own assets jointly with another individual and so then their will is not going to control those assets either. So that might be a spouse. So you may have assets uh, set up to go and trust for your spouse instead of outright, either because it's a second marriage and you want to make sure that your spouse's death things pass to your children or just you're concerned about remarriage protection and want to pr provide for your spouse but also protect an inheritance that you intend to leave for your children. Um, but if you own your house or if you own bank accounts jointly with your spouse, then that money's not going to go in that trust for them. We also see older couples who uh, go to the bank and have their children add it to their account as a joint owner. And you know, then you've got the situation where there's a brother and a sister. Sister is helping mom out with managing her finances. So mom says, well, you know, gosh, it'd be really nice for my sister to be able to write checks from the account to pay bills, goes to the bank, has daughter add it to the account not even realizing that what she's done is made that daughter a joint owner. And so even though her will says everything gets divvied up 50-50 between brother and sister, that sister gets that bank account over and above whatever else she's going to get under the will. And so that's kind of messed up the estate plan by the way she's owned her assets. Another um, thing that we're concerned about is we call them the mama's pie plate issues. So that's where all three children want mama's pie plate even though none of them bakes because it has sentimental value for them. And so a good estate plan is going to think about not only assets and not only about legal documents, but also the family situation or the, the things that um, could potentially cause disputes and plan around those to make sure that everything is, uh, you know, passes smoothly at death. Okay. So you may have already answered my next question, okay. but um, with everything, everybody having access to the documents and legal stuff online now, does someone really need to hire a lawyer? Yeah, absolutely. And um, you know, the, the thing that we tell people is you're going to pay now or you're going to pay later uh, because people that do it themselves, there's inherently going to be errors. Um, and the problem is that you don't know what you don't know. And unfortunately, you're not going to figure out what you've done wrong. Well, you're never going to figure out what you've done wrong. Your family's going to figure out what you've done wrong after you've passed away and then it's too late to fix it. Um, or even if we can fix it, it's going to be really costly to fix it because 
at that point, you know, there's there's no do-overs, there's no second chances once you've passed away, the document's in place. Um, and so some of the common things that we see people making the mistakes about is they don't include provisions that need to be in your will. Um, so there's a case in Florida that uh, was just in the paper last month about um, someone tried to disinherit uh, two nieces that she didn't like, um, but she didn't include a residuary clause in her will. And so the nieces ended up getting the bulk of her estate after going through litigation and most of her money being spent on lawyers' fees. Um, I've seen uh, legal documents that were prepared online that don't have the right language in the notary block and so without that proper language we have to go track down the witnesses and if years have passed and people have moved it's really difficult to locate the people that witness somebody's will. Um, other errors that we see are things like naming minor children as beneficiaries but not including trust provisions for them. Well minors can't inherit. You have to kind of put something in place for somebody to hold it for them until they become adults. Um, another error is uh, naming an executor but not waiving the requirement that the executor post bond, which is going to be really expensive for whoever you have named as your executor to come up with money to post bond so that they can get the court approval to serve in that capacity. So it's just these little things that people just don't think about. Um, because they don't draft wills every day. Right. Uh, but that's why it's really important to make sure that you get competent help when you are thinking about planning your estate. Yeah, well, there are a lot of things you could do it yourself, but maybe this is not one of them. This should not be one of them. Okay, well, very good. Thank you for the information. Thank and you. And for any of you out there that would like more information on Jennifer and her services, feel free to uh, check out the website at the end of this video. And if you want to con con continue this conversation online, please do so by filling out the box below. That's all we have for this week. Until next time, take care and bye-bye.